Sooners, Trey Young. Now let's just start from the beginning. He was born September 19th of 1998. His parents are Candace and Rayford Young. They have been married for 17 years. He has one younger brother and two younger sisters. Now let's just start from the beginning where Trey Young first learned to play basketball, right? He was three years old playing basketball in the living room with his grandfather, right? Rest in peace to him. He did pass away, but he did learn the game at three years old, very young age. Now, moving on to the seventh grade, he decided that dribbling and passing was born. He didn't want to do that anymore. What he wanted to do? He wanted to learn how to shoot, not just any shot. He wanted to be the guy on the basketball court who shot the furthest, right? So let's just talk about his dad now just a little bit because he's going to dramatically impact Trey Young's life now he's a former big 12 point guard for texas tech right and he feels that he's underachieved and he does not want trey young going through the type of things that he went through he feels like if he would have worked harder trained a little bit harder and not been so soft he could have fulfilled his dreams and made it to the nba now he he did play some basketball in europe and then he was successful at moving his family back to oklahoma where he now sells medical equipment right so entering high school, his parents had to make the decision to take him out of a polish school and put him in a more school that was di- more school and <laughs> put him in a school that was more diverse. Now, with that being said, this is the reason why uh, his parents decided to do that. See, Trey Young's father grew up poor, right? So he basically wanted him to have that experience. You know, in a lower class, you know, less technology, uh, the people around him are definitely not the same. You know, over here is high class, over here is a low class. So basically his father had to drive him every day to school so he could play with the other kids, the the kids that were more hardcore, you know, the kids that are really bring it to him, you know. They talk, you know, he wanted him to deal with stuff like them talking about his skin color because he was mixed, um, him having the best clothes, the best shoes, you know, living in a big house, you know, stuff like that, you know, little stupid stuff. But at the same time, this helped him throughout his career because now when he screams stuff like Trey Young sucks, this and that and the third, he knows how to deal with stuff like that. I mean, Michael Porter Jr. was on his team, you know, stealing some of his shot. Well, all of his shot, he was ranked number one in the nation. But anyway, it's not about him, and I'll probably do another video on him. But moving on. Now, on the on the drives there, his father used to basically talk to him, right? This is this is going on roughly around his freshman sophomore year. So his father used to talk to him. He used to, you know, throughout his training, he used to tell him stuff like, Do you want to be like me? Do you want to have the type of career I had? Or do you want to go to Duke? Do you want to go to Kentucky and play like that? So he was pushing Trey, you know, to train harder. And he also, you know, threw it at him at, you know, other angles. He used to hit him like, yo, do you want to be a local hero or do you want to be great? Do you want to be somebody who actually makes it to the NBA? You know, so he used to, you know, put his son on game, giving him that knowledge because he has been through that and he knows what to look for. So throughout all that, you know, basically he he mentored him and monitored his progress and making sure he stayed on the right track. You know, he didn't feed in to any of the hype. Anytime he dropped a high scoring game, he looked at him like, yo, who cares about that? Because at the end of the day, there's only one ultimate goal. So he never wanted Trey Young to lose focus. Now, they used to do something where they used to do something called stop and pop, right? They used to stop at the local YMCA and they used to get it in. But here's why. His mother did not allow a basketball goal at the house. <laughs> and it's crazy because father is a you know, basketball head and you, know, you got the son who's this star. But mom Duke ain't let no basketball be at the house because she, she went through that with you know, Rafe. And she don't want to do the same thing with Trey. It's like, keep basketball away from the house. When y'all come home, it's family because... One thing about her, I believe her father was like a preacher or something like that or a deacon of a church or whatever, whatever. But she's more on the family and her ego and Trey ego was more the same. That's why you see Trey Young on like Instagram or on Twitter, you know, mostly with his family. Like it's 
we don't I don't even know if this dude has a girlfriend or anything like that because he works so hard and he's so family oriented. Like he's definitely on the right path. So with that being said, they were doing these stopping pops. So basically he go into the YMCA, he makes them take uh fifty to the lane, he makes them take fifty jump shots um uh, from college, and then he makes them take 50 NBA threes and this was all going on in high school and then he would probably go to about half court and shoot 50 more shots right and then he also and he extended the training for their own he used to take 103 point shots a game Steph Curry does the same thing it's called basically the two miss rule right it's like if you miss two in a row you start all over Trey Young did not miss two in a row if he missed the very next shot he'll hit all right so Freshman year he didn't play because he switched districts. Now you got now you have the sophomore year. Sophomore year he comes in, he's balling out. 24 points a game, right? He wins Oklahoma player of the year, right? Sophomore year. My fault, not player of the year. Sophomore year. Okay, now, now jumping into his junior year is where they really got it in, right? And also his uh sophomore year, I believe they won the region title or something like that. Alright, so junior year, 34 points a game. Crushing. And he also wins. Player of the year this time. Moving into his senior year. 42 points a game. This kid averaged 42 points a game. He is not athletic. He's not a dunker. He shoot threes. Like, that is... That's that's ridiculous. Okay, so that summer he had a gold medal in the U.S. Uh, games under 18. Go all day. Shout out to them boys. And then... um. He was basically recruited by everybody in the nation. Everybody wanted this this kid, right? So, at this point, his mother was, you know, she used to do things with the girls and and the youngest son. She she was on that side while Trey and Dad was over here doing like stuff she didn't know about. We don't say stuff right now because we know what they were doing, but she didn't know. And she found out because I mean she knew they was training and playing basketball, but. She didn't know at what magnitude it was at until she was just getting a ton of phone calls at the house, like back to back all day. NBA scouts, um, trainers, people uh, trying to get with Trey, people trying to not get with him like that. I'm talking about like endorsements, people like that, you know, trying to look at the kid coaches and stuff. But um, like, and she was just like, yo, what, what's up? Like, what are they, what's really going on? So she starts to go out to these um tournaments. She starts to take, you know, college visits with her son, and she did know that Kentucky had, like, some awful dorm rooms. Like, what's up with Kentucky's dorm rooms? I, somebody let me know what's going on over there in Kentucky. My homeboy played football for Kentucky, but... So she goes on um, with them and finds out, like, her son is, like, semi-famous. Like, and she, she just couldn't believe it. So, and his college um, decision... Right, he had again a ton of offers, but his father, everybody knew he was leaning towards Oklahoma. He's he's from there. He wanted to play. He wanted basically to to stay home, right? So his father used to say stuff like, "Do you really want to go there?" Like he wanted his son to be on the highest playing level. He wanted him to be up there. But Trey was like, "Look, I I, I want to be different." He he stressed the fact that he wanted to be different. He didn't want to be like everybody else. You know, he wanted to be his own person. And he kind this kind of installed into him because when his father took him from that rich school over here to these other kids, it's like, now he's different. So he's used to being different. So what does he do? He makes the decision to play, you know, at home. So his father said, hey, you think it's, it's easy. The, the level you're playing at now in high school, right? He, he used to shut them down. Like I said, after games, when, when he used to ball out, he used to shut that down. And he used to tell Trey, he said, do you think you can continue this level at college? You know? Trey looked his dad dead in the eyes and said, it doesn't look that hard. The same thing I'm doing in high school, I'm going to do in college. And that's what he's doing right now today in college he was ranked 23 right and he felt some type of way about this he didn't like that he felt that he was overlooked again that he was with michael porter jr on his team but he felt he was overlooked he felt that you know they weren't giving him their respect due he was ranked number two uh well ranked the second best point guard in the nation and um 
he he wasn't cool with that. He he wanted to be recognized, right? But he didn't want to do it on a national level. He felt that he could go to any school and do it. He said, as long as he shoot and play well, they'll come. And that's exactly what happened because he dropped 43 points against the Oregon Ducks, and that was the game they started comparing him to Steph Curry. Shot the lights out. Man, balling. Okay, then he comes right back December, what was it? December 19th, right? 22 assists, tied the record, NCAA record, 22 assists. And not only did he get 22 assists, he had 26 points, man. Balling, right? So at this point in his career, right? And, and he's currently a freshman now playing. Um, but he went from being like a late first round, second round pick to a top three pick. Like instantly overnight, you talking about ballers life, ballers Midwest, elite mixtapes, everybody covering this kid. You know, YouTube sensation right now, balling out, right? Number one in the country in points, number one in the country in assists. This is, this will be the first time a player, if he finished with his average, uh, it was 30, I believe it's 29 and 10 now. But if he finished with those averages, he will become the first player in NCAA history to ever achieve that goal. Now, only one player in history that was a freshman who led the nation in scoring. And there's only been two freshmen in NCAA history who led the, the season, and well, the year in assists, right? And he could be, become the first freshman to do them both. And also, he's a one and done. I just want to let y'all know right now. He's one and done. He gone. All right. So... From there, he does that. And, and everything is not always green for him. So don't think like that. Because when when he went out there and played, what, who, who, who was it? West Virginia? Oh, my God. They Now, they didn't shut him down. He did have 29 points in that game. But Superman is vulnerable, too. He had eight turnovers, right? And this was a big thing. It was like, whoa. Like, that. I don't know if it was a storyline or what's going on, but if you drop 26, 29 points and you get eight turnovers, it ain't like that dude locked you down, right? It ain't like he locked you down. I mean, you still dropped 29. Those eight turnovers can be unfortunate, but like I said, so he, he hits a little lump in the road, you know what I'm saying? But he bounced right back. This dude dropped another 43 points, right? And seven assists. It was like an identical game. And then later on, he drops another career high, 48 points. 48 points, college. Man, this dude is incredible. All right, so he, they, they're calling this dude basically Steph Curry 2.0 right now, right? He, he isn't even done with his freshman year. Steph Curry 2.0, they're comparing him to him. And Steph Curry is also one of his favorite players, if I didn't tell you that before, and also his top player of all time is Steve Nash and he mocks his game after both of those players so you're talking about a the evolution of Steph Curry like you're watching Steph Curry in college right now with Trey Young also let me tell you a little thing of a phobia of Trey Young before I let you guys go all right this dude is afraid of birds I'm dead serious he is afraid of birds there's been reports you know, from his college teammates, from his people on campus that, look, if this dude see a bird, he's bouncing. He's going the other way, literally, right? Um, and I think his team first found out about this. I think these guys were overseas or something like that, and they were coming out, and then they seen this bird, and dude just, like, spazzed out. And then there was other cases where they'd be practicing, and he'd come out and see, like, a pigeon sitting there doing his little thing or whatever. Trey take the long way around. That's crazy. Let me know what you think in the comments section if you're new to this channel. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe. I will be seeing you in the next one.